Amen. What a beautiful day that God has given us to come together today. Amen. And uh, be able to come into the house of God and to worship and to praise. Yes. And uh, I don't know about y'all, but it kind of makes my week each and every week we get to come in here and fellowship Amen. and spend some time with each other, but also to learn the Word of God. Yep. Uh, I had started a topical study a couple of weeks ago, and uh, the, the name of the study is The Fruit of Sin. We hear about the fruit of righteousness all the time, uh, but rarely do we hear about the fruit of sin. So, if you missed the study two weeks ago, we went all the way back to the Old Testament, back into Genesis chapter 3 and 4, and it's about Cain and Abel. Well, everybody knows what happened with Cain and Abel. So, you know, Cain's, Cain's offering was not pleasing to God, and, and Cain got angry. So what was the fruit of sin there? He got jealous, he was envious, and he was angry. So what was the fruit of sin? He committed murder. The first murder was Cain. And that is exactly, I mean, that's a, that's a worst case scenario fruit of the sin. You know, to take another person's life uh, out of anger and jealousy and envy, but now those are two, three powerful tools that Satan likes to use. Um, the scripture I love for this, uh, this topic is uh, Romans 6.23 that says, For the wages of sin is death. Uh, but the gift of God is eternal life through Jesus Christ. Amen. So the fruit of righteousness is eternal life. Alright, so uh, you're definitely going to get your fill of a spiritual meal, uh, meal today. Uh, we're going to do quite a few verses here. So we'll just go ahead and get started. Deuteronomy chapter 30 verse 1. We're going to go to the law here. Alright, and it shall come to pass when all these things are come upon thee, the blessings and the curse which I have set before thee, and thou shalt call them to the mind, to mind among all the nations whither the Lord thy God hath driven them. Now a lot of people, when you read that verse or you say something to them about God's blessings and God's cursings, they'll say, Brother Jimmy, I ain't never heard of that before. Now let's not confuse that with the fact that God does not bring forth evil. Alright? James 1.13 says, Let no man say when he is tempted, I am tempted of God. Neither doth he tempteth man with evil. God doesn't bring forth evil, folks. Satan does. Evil spirits do. Not God. But, He can give you either blessings or He can give you cursings. Amen. And I've got news for you right now. When He takes that hand off of you, you're going to feel the cursings because Satan's going to have his way with you. Um, and a lot of people, they say, like I said, they say they've never heard of that before. Well, you need to read Deuteronomy chapter 28. Um, it tells about the blessings and cursings of God. I don't know about you, but I want the blessings. Amen. I don't want the cursings of God because if God's got a problem with you, you're going to get it. Um, so it's very important. Also, in Leviticus 26, um, what I love about it is, you know, we have so much power and authority that God has given us with Jesus Christ working through us. And now when God blesses you, five of you uh, can send a hundred of the enemy to flee from you. Amen. Now tell me that's not power. Or um, ten of you can send ten thousand to flee when you're blessed of God. I mean there's several, several cases in this Bible where it talks about that just a handful of people to conquer a thousand people you know, and that is the power and the gift of, of the Holy Spirit and of God. But now if you want to take the cursings, the sound of a rustling leaf will cause you to flee when there's not even an enemy present. That's right. I don't know about you, but I don't want to be walking around living life scared. We don't have to. That's right. Because we have the Holy Spirit of God that dwells within us. Amen. And I know I say this all the time. A lot of people say, well, prove to me there's a God. I've kind of gotten smart about it a little bit sometimes. I will prove me ain't one. Amen. You know, um, and I'll say it again. There's no way that you can explain it unless you receive Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior. But it dwells within us each and every day. Um, and we are given a choice. You can be blessed or you can be cursed. It's up to you. All right? Verse 2, And shalt return, and shalt return unto the Lord thy God, and shalt obey His voice according to all that I commanded thee this day, thou and thy children, with all thine heart, and with all of thy soul. 
So this said to return. In other words, if you fall away and you're going the wrong direction, repent Amen. of your sin and change your course so that you can receive the blessings of God. Verse 3, that then the Lord thy God will turn thy captivity and have compassion upon thee. What was the stipulation? To repent. Turn back to God. Uh, and will return and gather thee from all the nations whither the Lord thy God hath scattered thee. So you can either go into captivity or you can repent and ask for forgiveness of sins and head back the right direction. I'm going to tell you something. Heading down the wrong direction, folks, you are going to suffer the fruit of sin. You're going to suffer the cursings of God. Or you can do what's right. You know, what is it to be righteous? It's to do what's right. It's not very hard, really, to do what is right. I know sometimes Satan likes to have his way with it. He knows what your weakness is. And he's going to use that weakness on you. And the only way that you can fortify yourself is to be in the Word of God, to be into prayer, to spend time with Him, to go to church, to go to Bible study, whatever you got to do to get your Jesus on. Come on. All right? That will fortify you from anything that the devil will throw into your path. All right, verse 4. If any of thine be driven out unto the outermost part of heaven, I want you to pay close attention to that because I really didn't catch that until I studied it again this time. If any of thine be driven out unto the outermost part of heaven, it didn't say earth, and from thence will thy God gather thee, and from thee thence will fetch thee. Um, I can't help but think now what I'm about to say, some of you are deeper students, and i got people online that are deeper students, um, that will understand exactly what I'm talking about. But if you were to go and read Luke chapter 16, the parable of Lazarus and the rich man. Now old Lazarus, he went to heaven and he was in the bosom of Abraham. But now the rich man was on the other side and he was in hell. But yet he was in hell and could see into heaven. Now how is that possible? There was a great gulf affixed between the two. You don't get it right, you're going on to the wrong side of the gulf. So, like I said, that's kind of a deeper thread there. But it says that he would gather, he would, of any thine be driven out unto the outermost part of heaven, that God would gather them back to himself. Again, on a deeper thread, there's going to be a lot of people come to salvation during the millennium, which is a thousand years teaching of Jesus Christ. Amen. Can I get an amen? amen. Uh, there will be a lot of people turned back to God in those days. All right, verse 5, And the Lord thy God will bring thee into the land which thy fathers possessed, and thou shalt possess it, and he will do thee good and multiply thee above thy fathers. Amen. He can curse you or he can bless you. And the thing about it is our actions and our decisions determine which one we're going to receive. So many people want to blame God for, what, for what's going on in their lives. They don't have anything. Everything they touch falls apart. Folks, you get what you put out back. It is your choice. I know a lot of people also will say, well, brother, you don't understand. I was raised by an alcoholic parent, and I had to deal with that. Brother, you don't understand. I was molested as a child, so they're going to be a crumb bum because they blame it on what happened to them in their childhood. But see, you have a decision. You can overcome your circumstances. You make the choice of which path you're going to go down. What happened to you in your past does not determine where you have to end up in your destination. Amen. We have a choice. Let that garbage go. Whatever's happened to you in your past, whoever's hurt you and stabbed you in the back, or whatever they did to you when you was a child, forgive them for that. You say, brother, how am I supposed to forgive them for what they did to me? Do you think they sitting at home thinking about you right now, wondering about you? Nope. No, they're not. Forgive them. Yep. Forgive them. Give them to God and move forward with your life Amen. so that you can claim the blessings of Almighty God. <clears throat> Alright, verse 6. And the Lord thy God will circumcise thine heart and the heart of thy seed. Now thy seed, it means prodigy or it means children, to love the Lord thy God with all thine heart and with all thy soul that thou mayest live. The circumcision today is not the circumcision of flesh. In Romans chapter 2, verse 29, it is the circumcision of the heart. It means true repentance. Anybody can say, oh, well, Father, forgive me. 
But what is true repentance? It is actually to feel bad about what you did and have a change of heart Amen. and change course yeah. to go in the right direction. That is the circumcision of the heart. <laughs> and I love it too, in verse 6 it says, uh, which thy fathers possessed and thou shalt possess it. I'm sorry, did I not go? Which verse? That, uh, verse 6, I'm sorry. Uh, it says, the Lord thy God will circumcise thine heart and the heart of thy seed. I love that. And you're going to hear that several times throughout this lecture. Don't ever think that you're wasting your time and, and, and your effort and, and to spend the time with God because it's only going to result in blessing. Right. But I'm going to tell you something else that it will result in. Now, what happened with Lot in the Sodom and Gomorrah with his wife and his children? Now, no doubt in my mind, I don't, you know, he, he was at the gates, which meant he was, he was actually set in a place of judgment and living in that city, that filthy sin. And oh, Abraham loved God so much. And God loved Abraham so much. And through Abraham's righteousness, God spared his kin. So I know without a shadow of my doubt that everything that I've studied in this Bible, you do what's right. You spend time with God. And you have that good, loving relationship with Him. And He will do everything in His power to bring thy seed into eternal life as well. Amen. Man, God is so awesome to us. Thank God. <clears throat> Alright. Verse 7. And the Lord thy God will put all these curses upon thine enemies. Hallelujah. Amen. <laughs> and on them that hate thee, which persecute thee. <clears throat> Did Jesus Christ not say, do not touch one of my anointed ones? That's <laughs> right. You, you're out in the world and you're spreading acts of kindness and you're doing righteous deeds and righteous acts. You get up each and every day and try to do what is right. Folks, God will protect you from your enemies. <clears throat> Matthew five eleven says, Blessed are ye when men shall revile you and persecute you and shall say all manner of evil against you falsely for my name's sake. Now, if you really want to get, I mean, I know, you know, especially men, you get all mad and angry and you get all puffed up and your chest blows out and you're ready to fight. I mean, it's just human nature sometimes for us to lose our temper and do things that we don't want to do. But now, if you really and truly want to get back at your enemy, pray for them. Amen. You can't do anything to them like God can do to them. You pray for them. Now, and I also say, I know a lot of people, when I say that, they sit there and say, turn the other cheek. I know I bring this up because it comes up a lot. Folks, turn the other cheek when Christ was teaching that was because He was preparing them to go out into the world and teach the gospel. The, the point was that they were not to go and offend someone in their religion. Now, that would be like me having all the knowledge that I've got and say, Miss Trish over here didn't know the first thing about the Bible and I back up my dump truck that's full of all this knowledge and wisdom and I dump it on her and she believes this and I believe that. She says, I believe this. And I said, well, you're just crazy. All of y'all are going to hell. And she smacked me on the cheek. You deserved it. Yes. We're supposed to plant seeds and walk away. Now, why am I saying that? Because if somebody comes up to you and puts their hands on you, knock them on their donkey. Amen. We are allowed to protect ourselves and to protect our families. Yes. And now if you can avoid a confrontation like that, we are supposed to represent the Father of Jesus Christ. You do just walk away. Because their mouth ain't going to hurt nothing. Let them keep running their mouth. Go home and pray for them. And God will take care of them. Amen. I've seen it. He'll either change their minds to bring them into a tender heartedness with you, or he is going to whack them upside the head. My wife was talking about, I said something to praise us about our neighbor coming over and helping us this morning. There was a time when me and that fella almost come into a fist fight behind City Hall right up there in the middle of Clifton. And I prayed for him. And I tell you what, God touched him. I don't know when it happened. He's like a light switch and all of a sudden he loved us. You know, no, there's only one explanation for that. Right. And that is the power and authority of Almighty God. Amen. Verse 8. 
And thou shalt return and obey the voice of the Lord. What was the stipulation? To obey the voice of the Lord and do all His commandments which I command thee this day. And that is the condition, folks. And a lot of people always seem to miss the condition in God's Word. To receive God's blessings, what do you got to do? Hearken unto the voice of the Lord Amen. and obey His commandments. James 1.22, But be ye doers of the Word and not hearers only. You are deceiving yourself. If everything that you learn sitting in these pews and you go out into the world and you don't apply them to your life, it's doing you absolutely no good or anybody else any good out there that you should be setting an example for. Right. So, we have to be doers of the Word. That's what repentance is, is changing your ways. You recognize it, that you're going the wrong way. Um, I did a long study on self-examination. Take a good hard look at yourself in the mirror. What am I doing? You ever get some in, in a place in your life and it seems like everything just keeps going wrong? And it, it just keeps seems to get worse and everything you touch just kind of falls apart? Of course, you blame it, God, but you better take a look in the mirror and figure out what it is that you're doing displeasing to God. You already know what it is. You just don't want to admit to it. Humble yourself before God, ask for forgiveness, and go the right direction. That's all there is to it. All right, verse 9. And the Lord thy God uh, will make thee plenteous. Now listen to this. I mean, you do what's right. You obey the commandments of God. Do what's pleasing to Him. And the Lord thy God will make thee plenteous in every work of thine hand. So instead of everything you touch falling apart, guess what? Everything you touch is going to be plenteous. All right? And then what else? We was talking about how God and our families, and, you know, I know that each and every person in here may have a family member that's not been saved before. They're not walking in the ways of the Lord. But you're sitting right here in this church today and you praise and worship God. You love Him. You get up and try to do what's right each and every day. So what this verse then says, the fruit, then it says, plenteous in every work of thy hand in the fruit of thy body. What is the fruit of your body? It is your children. It is your offspring. And in the fruit of the cattle and in the fruit of the land, for good, for the Lord again rejoiced over thee for good, and He rejoiced over thy fathers. What was the condition? Return to Him. I've been in some pretty bad low spots in my life before, and almost to the point of just rock bottom. But yet it's never too late. God's hand is, is just as close as your next breath. All you have to do is humble yourself before God. Ask Him to forgive you. Do not let somebody tell you that you are not worthy of forgiveness or redemption in your life. He is as close as the next breath. He has His hand out. Repent to God and reach out and grab it. Amen. <clears throat> Verse 10. If thou shalt hearken unto the voice of the Lord thy God to keep His commandments and His statutes which are written in the book of law, and if thou turn unto the Lord thy God with all thine heart and with all of thy soul, Amen. you can have blessings or you can have cursings. It is your choice and nobody's at fault but yourself if you are receiving the curses of God today. The fruit of sin is death. The fruit of righteousness is eternal life through Jesus Christ. Amen. Verse 11, For this commandment which I command thee this day, it is not hidden from thee, neither is it far off. God makes the Word of God available to everybody. Everybody. In the book of Guinness World Records in 1995, do you know what book was the most published at that time? It was the Holy Word of God. It was the Bible. Um, five billion copies. Five billion. In 1995. I couldn't imagine what the sale of them is today. Now too bad, you know, at least half of those would pick this thing up and read it. They could have God's blessings and not God's curses. Alright, so basically God's saying He didn't keep it a secret. 
Verse 12. It is not, he's saying, we're talking about the Word of God, it is not in heaven that thou shouldest say, Who shall go up for us to heaven and bring it unto us, that we may hear it and do it. Did you hear that? May hear it and do it. So we don't have to pay an astronaut to go up to, the, to heaven to fetch the Word of God for us. You're holding it in your hand today. We are provided the freedom in this country, first and foremost by God, and then the men and women who sacrifice their lives each and every day so that you can have this Bible. Alright, verse 13. Neither is it beyond the sea that thou shouldest say, Who shall go over the sea for us and bring it unto us that we may hear it and do it? Do you, are you hearing the message? You hear it and you do it and apply it to your life. That verse is saying, hey, we don't have to pay Christopher Columbus to go all the way across the sea to bring us the Word of God. It's right here. We got it. It's with us all the time. Just like the Holy Spirit of God is also with us at all times. Verse 14. But the Word is very nigh unto thee in thy mouth and in thy heart that thou mayest do it. But be ye doers of the word and not hearers only. Verse 15. See, I have set before thee this day life and good or death and evil. Now, I can't help but think of the verse of Matthew chapter 7, verse 13 and 14. Straight is the way and narrow is the gate. Or, I'm sorry. Straight is the gate and broad is the way that leadeth unto destruction. And many there be that go in there at. Man, we got all kinds of people on that million mile highway. It's, it's about a hundred, hundred lanes wide and it's just wide open and, and billions of God's children are traveling down that wide road to destruction. And why? Because straight is the way and narrow is the gate that leadeth unto eternal life. Amen. And few there be that go in there. It's a really sad, sad thing. Can you imagine living this life without having that hope and peace of God that's within you today? Oh, man. Thank you, Jesus, for the sacrifice that you made for us. Alright, verse 16. And in that I command thee this day to love the Lord thy God, to walk in His ways, and to keep His commandments and His statutes and His judgments, and that thou mayest live and multiply, and the Lord thy God shall bless thee in the land, hither thou goest to possess it. Amen. We've got a promised land. Do you know what that is? It is the kingdom of God. That is the promised land that we are promised Amen. when we do what is good instead of what is evil. Verse 17. But if thine heart turn away, so that thou wilt not hear, but thou shalt draw away and worship other gods and serve them. If you apostatize, if you fall away from God and start following the ways of the world, the fruit of sin is death, folks. And there's coming a time when the Antichrist will be on this earth and so many of God's children will apostatize, they will fall away from Him, thinking that He is Jesus Christ. <laughs> And I know a lot of people when we're talking about drawing away and worshiping other gods, and they say, "Well, we don't. I'm not. I'm not worshiping a little Buddha or a stick or something like that." Now, do you remember how it was when COVID nineteen hit? I mean, you don't think that God didn't take His hand off this great nation, and there was some cursing going on because people were were uh, worshiping their rock stars or their their favorite race car driver or they were in a stadium worshiping their favorite football team or their basketball team and they were so wrapped up in serving all the gods that this world offers and they turned their backs on God. That's exactly what happened. Now, has everything rectified itself since all that happened? No. Now, I'm not saying, I'm not saying that there weren't a lot of people that turned to the Lord Maybe some of them out of fear. Maybe some of them were convicted of the Holy Spirit, so they changed their mind. Second Chronicles 7.14, I'm sure a lot of you heard this during the pandemic. For it is my people who are called by my name 
shall humble themselves and pray and seek my face and turn away from their wicked ways, then I will hear from heaven and forgive their sin and I will heal their land. So, now they finally lifted the mask mandate and all these things on a lot of things that we were shut off from there for a while. The stadiums are opened up and thousands and thousands of people are filling those stadiums again to go to football games and such. Now, there ain't nothing wrong with that. I mean, some people, that's what they do to relax so forth, but don't put it before God. Come on. Because when you put it before God, anything that you put before God, you know, I didn't come to church today because I was tired. Well, then you're putting your rest of your body before God. I mean, we, we are given the freedom the freedom to come here each and every week to worship God. So a lot of people have gone back to worshiping their idols. But it says, If thine heart turn away so thou wilt not hear, thou shalt be drawn away and worship other gods and serve them. Let's look, I mean, let's look at what's happening in the world today. They have now now you gonna tell me that the hearts of God's children are not turning away from him and we let them legalize same sex marriages. Then you've got the Pope who stood on national television and said that we ought to recognize same-sex unions. As far as I'm concerned, he is the spawn of Satan. Amen. Now you think about all the millions of people that follow him. And he and he and he recognized that and is for it again on live TV. We got transgenderism. Now, I mean, it would just make you fall out if you really look to see what the schools are teaching our children in, in elementary school. Yep. <clears throat> Trying to tell them that they have the choice to decide whether they're a boy or a girl. I always say, man, the old, old farmer, you can pick up a puppy and look up under the undercarriage and, and, if it, and if it's, yeah, you can tell whether it's a boy or a girl in a cancer. Right. There ain't no dead gum confusion in that. And we wonder why that we are in the shape that we are and how evil things are today. Why? Because we are walking away from the laws and the commandments of God. That's right. Now those of us who stand up and do what's right, those of us who worship and love the Lord, folks, even though these things continue to get worse, we are under the protection of God. Amen. Thank you, Jesus. We have a president on national television saying that it's okay for us to murder babies. I've said this before, and I think it was in 2017, there was 857,000 abortions in the United States alone. He's pushing the agenda that it's okay to abort a child up to the time of birth. Folks, that's murder. Amen. And then we wonder why we are in the shape that we are today. See, man's putting all these laws into place that have absolutely nothing to do with the laws of God. Alright, so what did God say? I denounce unto you this day that ye shall surely perish. The fruit of sin, folks, is death. And that ye shall not prolong your days upon the land which thou possessest over Jordan to go to possess it. Your life won't be blessed. When you leave God out of the equation, you are going to lose. You may not lose while you walk this earth and you may rip a bunch of people off and you may make a bunch of money and live in, and live in big fancy houses and have vehicles. But at the end of the day, you will lose because you will not walk into the kingdom of God. Verse 19. I call heaven and earth to record this day against you. Do you know where that's recorded? It's recorded in the books. There are books in heaven. And every single thing that we do in our lives are written in those books. And in the day of judgment, you will give an account thereof. Amen. Because we will all stand before the judgment seat of Jesus Christ. I call heaven and earth to record this day against you that I have set before you life and death. That's eternal life or eternal damnation in hell. Come on. Blessings and cursings. Man, there ain't nothing like God's blessings. 
Do you thank God for the small things that He does for you in your yes. life? You know, some th there's some things we just don't, a lot of people would overlook, but you say, oh, thank you, Lord. Thank you, because if you hadn't done that, I'd have been this. Therefore, what does God want to do? What does He want from you? He wants you to choose life. And here we go again, that both thou and thy seed may live. So that you can have eternal life. So that your loved ones, your brothers and sisters, have a chance at eternal life through the sacrifice and the work that you put in today. Amen. Verse 20. That thou mayest love the Lord thy God, and thou mayest obey His voice. How do you obey His voice today? Go and buy this. And thou mayest cleave unto him, for he is thy life, and the length of his days, that thou mayest dwell in the land which the Lord swear unto his father Abraham, to Isaac, and to Jacob to give them. Can I get an amen? Amen. amen.